The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. Retold and illustrated by Kameko Sakai. Translated from the Japanese by Yuki Kaneko. In the beginning, the Velveteen Rabbit was truly splendid. He was fluffy and plump, and his ears were lined with pink satin. He looked very sweet as he peeked out from the Christmas stocking with a sprig of holly. The boy who received the rabbit as a gift was delighted. He hugged and patted his rabbit while playing and talking with him. He did so for almost two hours. But when his uncles arrived with new presents, the boy lost himself in the excitement and forgot about his velveteen rabbit. The little rabbit spent his time in the toy cupboard or the corner of the nursery. There, he met the many toys that lived in the room. The expensive toys and the mechanical toys often said, I am real. They boasted about themselves and snubbed the rabbit for being made of mere cloth. The velveteen rabbit felt ashamed and hid himself timidly in the corner. The only one that was kind to him was the skin horse. He was the oldest in the nursery and looked shabby and frayed, but his eyes gleamed wisely. Everyone talks about being real, but what is real? Asked the rabbit one day. Does it mean you move and have a key to wind you up? No, that's not real, said the skin horse gently. Real is a thing that happens when a toy has spent a long time becoming a child's true friend. When a child really cares for you, not just to play with you, but loves you from the heart, then you become real. Even if you're old and tattered by then, it doesn't matter. You too can become real, young fellow. In the nursery, magic happens from time to time. There was a nursemaid called Nana in the boy's family. The toys were afraid of her because every so often she did what was called tidying up. Once it began, the toys were swooped up and thrown into the cupboard. One evening, Nana noticed that the toy dog the boy always slept with was missing. What a bother, she thought. Then she quickly snatched the velveteen rabbit from the cupboard. Here's your little bunny, she said to the boy. You can sleep with him from now on. And she put the rabbit into the boy's arms. From then on, the rabbit slept in the boy's bed every night. At first, he found it rather uncomfortable and stifling, and he missed the cupboard where he could talk with the skinned horse. But soon, he grew to like being with the boy. The boy was always kind to him and made him a rabbit's burrow under the comforter. There, they chatted in whispers endlessly. When the boy fell asleep, the rabbit snuggled up to the boy's cheek and had pleasant dreams. Spring came, and they went out into the garden to play. The boy and the rabbit were always together. The rabbit was offered rides in the wheelbarrow, tea in the afternoon, and a lovely tiny cottage was built for him under the raspberry thicket. Gradually, he became grimy and muddy, but he didn't mind at all because he was happy every day. Once, 
When the boy was suddenly called to go on an outing, the rabbit was left in the garden. Nana came to look for him after dark, holding a lamp in her hand. This scruffy bunny is indeed a bother, she muttered. All this fuss over a toy, because a little one can't go to sleep without it. She rubbed the dirt off the rabbit with her apron. What's so special about this dirty old toy, she grumbled. Stop it, Nana, exclaimed the boy. He isn't a toy, he's real. The velveteen rabbit was overjoyed. I am real he thought. I have become real. He was too happy to sleep that night. It was a wonderful summer. Behind the house, there was a wood where the boy would take his rabbit and play for hours. The boy always placed the rabbit carefully on the grass before running off to pick flowers or play bandits. One day, when the velveteen rabbit was sitting by a tree, as he always did, he saw two strange things emerge from the ferns. They were rabbits, just like he was, but with no seams, and their bodies stretched and shrunk when they moved. I wonder where the keys are to wind them up he thought, as he stared at them in amazement. Why are you sitting still? One of them asked. Why don't you come along and play with us? I don't really feel like playing, said the velveteen rabbit anxiously. He didn't want them to find out that there was no key to wind him up. You're an odd one, said the other rabbit. Look, can you hop like this? He gave a big hop. I can, mumbled the velveteen rabbit. I can hop really high. What he didn't want to say was, his hop only happened when the boy tossed him. So he said, I just don't feel like it right now. The wild rabbits began to whirl around him in a dance. Come on, they called. Come dance with us and show us your hop. The velveteen rabbit was about to cry. How can I dance like they do? He wondered hopelessly. Suddenly, one wild rabbit stopped dancing and put his face right up to the velveteen rabbit. He smells funny, he said. This isn't a real rabbit. I am real, cried the velveteen rabbit. The boy said so. Just then, the crunch of the boy's footsteps could be heard. In a flash, the two wild rabbits were gone. Come back, please, the velveteen rabbit called after them. I am real, but the wild rabbits never returned. Time passed. The velveteen rabbit grew old and became even dirtier and shabbier. He was so shabby that in many people's eyes, he hardly looked like a rabbit anymore. But to the boy, he was as beautiful as ever. And that was enough to make the rabbit happy. He knew that being shabby didn't matter because the magic of the nursery made him real. Then one day the boy fell ill. He had a high fever and slept day after day. Strange people came into the nursery and the light burned all through the night. The rabbit clung to the boy, hiding under the comforter. He was careful that he wouldn't be found and taken away. When no one was in the room, he crept up close to the pillow and whispered in the boy's ear. He told the boy 
things that were fun and exciting. He talked about the wonderful days they had spent in the garden among the flowers and the butterflies, playing together under the raspberry thicket. After a long, weary time, the boy's fever finally went down. One bright sunny morning, the windows to the nursery were opened wide and the boy was carried out onto the balcony. The next day, he would be going to the seaside and would stay there until he was well again. Hooray, cried the rabbit. We're going to the beach. The rabbit was delighted. He couldn't wait to see the big waves and the tiny crabs that the boy had so often talked about. It was at that moment that he heard the boy's doctor talking to Nana. You must disinfect the whole room, said the doctor, and burn all the books and toys that he played with. How about this old bunny? asked Nana. That's a mass of germs, said the doctor. Burn it right away. You can always get a new one. The Velveteen Rabbit had never thought of such an end. He was put into a sack and carried out to the end of the garden to be burned with the other toys and books the next day. The boy had forgotten him in the excitement over going to the seaside. Shivering with cold, the Velveteen Rabbit stuck his head out of the sack and looked around. He could see the black silhouette of the raspberry thicket under which he had played with the boy on balmy spring days. I wish I could go back to that wonderful time, he thought, and the beautiful memories almost broke his heart. Why should it all end like this for someone who had been loved so much and become real? A tear, a real tear trickled down his cheek and fell to the ground. Then a strange thing happened. From the ground where the tear had fallen, a sprout of a flower came out and quickly grew. Soon the flower opened and from inside a beautiful fairy appeared. Little rabbit, she said. Do you know who I am? The rabbit was so stunned that he forgot about crying and gazed at her in wonder. I am the fairy of the nursery, she continued. I take care of the toys that the children have truly loved. When their time comes and they have to say goodbye, I come for them and make them real. I'm already real, said the rabbit. You were real to the boy because he loved you very much, said the fairy. Tonight, I will make you real to everyone. She gently kissed the rabbit on his nose. Now, you shall become real to all. Autumn passed and winter, and then spring came. The seasons had come around, and once, when the boy was in the wood, he came upon an odd wild rabbit that seemed to be staring at him. How curious, he thought. That rabbit looks just like my old bunny that was lost when I had a bad fever. 